Welcome to Toffee TV today. I am joined by a rising star of snooker, 18 year old Sean Maddox, Evertonian, is in the room. Sean, welcome to Toffee TV, mate. Uh, snooker, snooker, scouts are playing snooker. It's always, uh, it's always good. Yeah. After uh, John Parrott, Evertonian as well, you know, famous snooker player from the city. But how did you get into snooker and why snooker, not football? Uh, it was football at first. Was it? Yeah. And then you get to a level and you. You, you're just not going to make a career out of it, so... Early uh, decision, yeah? Yeah. So why snooker then? I was better. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's fair enough, yeah. very honest. And yeah. How did that come about, playing, playing snooker? Um, at first, my nan and granddad had a pool table in the shed. Uh, and I used to just have a couple of games on that. Yeah. Um, and then one day, my granddad was watching the snooker. He used to play years ago, so he, he still watches it sometimes. Yeah. And um, I was just bored, so I was watching it with him. It caught my attention, and yeah. I got I got into it. I watched the end of that um, that match. It was the World Championship final. Oh right, yeah. And uh, it was John Higgins playing Judd Trump. Right. And that just caught my eye, and I was watching it. Um, I watched it from the start to the end, just that one match. And I started playing it, just getting into it more and more. Yeah. And then. First time I ever went to a full size table, I went to go and see me. I, I went to have a lesson right. with my coach. Um, I'm still with, still with him now. All oh, right. Um, okay. But he, he he thought I had a lot of natural talent at first. Straight away, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Obviously a good judge then. Isn't yeah. <laughs> I think I can't remember, but he said I made like a thirty odd break first time I ever played. Um, so I lost to trust him on that one. Like I can't remember. Um, yeah, so so I just got into it more and more, and yeah. then I started practicing. He, he plays and he coaches in Old Swan, right? Yeah. In a George Scott's new club, um, and I, I just I was just started going up there once or twice a week, and I just started getting better and better. And they used to have a tournament, well, they still have a tournament there every Saturday against the other kids around um, Liverpool and stuff. Yeah. And I, I started winning them all the time then. And it was it was on like a handicap system, so I started off on like th like plus thirty. Yeah. And most players start off like plus sixty odd. Right. So so I was already at a head start on them. And yeah. they'd been playing longer than me, so so I was taken to it quick. And then by the time I was like twelve I, I made my first century break in there. <laughs> at the age of twelve. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, and then But you were made off, I mean Tons of breaks, incredible. Yeah, so he's at twelve making that. I kept missing after after that one. I kept missing the last ball <laughs> to make another one. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And uh, I ended up by the time I'd made my next one, my second uh, century break. I just started making loads then. Did you? I made about hundred in a year when I was about thirteen. So I started just making loads, exactly. and um, so I was getting more confident. Then I was just uh, I started making bigger breaks more often. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'd take it into my tournaments. And I ended up winning a couple of uh, junior tournaments, like the Northwest Junior Tournaments. Right. And I won that five years on the bounce. Okay. And um, by the time I was 15, I started to do better in the men's tournaments then. And I, I won the Merseyside Open uh, when I was 15. I beat John Parrott's record uh, from like 1980 odd. Yeah. Uh, he was 18 when he won and I was 15. Incredible. Yeah, and then a couple of months before that, I made a, I made the youngest one four seven in a tournament. I know about this. You're in the Guinness Book of Records for this, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. Fifteen years of age, making a one four seven maximum break. Yeah. Taking um, taking a, a snooker player who's who's quite good record actually. Do you want to? Do you want to say who was? <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie o, the Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yeah. He was a hell of a player. So I mean, what what does that feel like to be in the, the Guinness Book of World Records? Good, <laughs> but, yeah, good, but it's just weird, really. I don't yeah. know. Just it, it took. Th I think it was twenty eight years. His record stood for. So I'll just see how long my one stands for now. <laughs> I mean, you took John Parrott's one yeah. after from the eighties, and yeah. this is this is yeah. you know another twenty eight years. So it, this this isn't something that happens regularly. So it's something yeah. you should be incredibly proud yeah. of. But when you were making the one four seven, I mean, what was that like? Was you was your bottle gone? How early did you know you were? Or how early were you thinking about it in that break? After about two or three blacks, the balls were just, they just looked 
like I had make one there, and I hadn't made one in practice either. Haven't you know? No, and not until that point. That was the first one four seven I'd made. Right. But they just looked like they were there to 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 be to taken. Be yeah. Oh my god. And um. Were you nervous? Not really. No, what no. he was a pro. Uh, Gary Wilson was playing on the the next table to me in the tournament, and um, he was. I seen him in the corner of my eye watching. Yeah, yeah. So I was concentrating on not missing an easy shot, really. <laughs> and I just ended up falling on the black all the time. And I got to about, I remember I got to about 56, and they were just all there. Just, they were just like an easy shot. So it was just more concentration than anything. Easy shots, yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. And, um, yeah. Must have, I mean, what was the knock on the black in? What did they feel like? You must have been nervous then. Come on, to pot the black for the 147. No. no. More on the pink. I had a tough shot on the pink. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. And I, just, I finished perfect on the black, so couldn't really miss it. I mean, I've seen, seen like people like Jamie White missing straight yeah. blacks in, in World Championship finals. They're never easy. Yeah. You might say it's easy, they're never easy. And so obviously you've got that record, which is it's amazing, 15-year-old doing that. Yeah. And then it's seeing that you'd won the, the European Championship under 17. Yeah, I won, I won the European under 17s when I was 14. That was in Malta. I went over, it was the first time I'd been to a different country to play. Yeah. And my coach came over with me. Right. Um and we won that with a brand new queue as well, my queue broke two days before I went over there. That's like nightmare. That's a, yeah. the equivalent of your favourite pair of boots not being there. <laughs> yeah. You know, isn't it? Incredible. Yeah. To win it with a new queue. Yeah. I, I played well towards the end of that. It was, yeah. it was a good good um, standard of player yeah. in that tournament. So I've done well to win that and then it was it was the that was the same year I made the 147. I was 14 when I won that, and I was I just turned 15 when I made the 147. Good year then. Yeah, it was yeah. And then towards like the last couple of years, I entered in um, the Q school mm. last May. Is that qualifying school for that's to, to turn professional? That's like, what, yeah. yeah. And there was like I think there was the record number like 250 players or something in it. What's the yeah. 240 players in it. And you play down to like the last four of each tournament. Right. So so you, you've got to win like six or seven matches to turn pro. And I had I had a really tough draw. Yeah. I was just playing like top players yeah. and, and I weren't favourite to come through at all. And I, I lost in the last round. Right. Um that was a sixteen, I think. I think right. I was sixteen. So you were close, um, very, very close. Yeah. And then my next tournament after that was in Malta, the world under eighteens. Nice. And that was to turn professional, the winner turn professional. Okay. And I got to the final. I think I only dropped. Really? I think I dropped like three frames to get to the final, three <sighs> or four frames. Yeah, and that was a really good tournament as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just got beat in the final. That was to automatically turn pro. Right. Okay. But in in the last the last couple of months, um, I got awarded a, to a two year professional card uh, off that tournament. Yeah. From that. Yeah. Brilliant. Isn't yeah. It? So what? I mean, what does that feel like? Because obviously, going from your shed, your nan's shed, to uh, yeah. to becoming a pro, it must be must be a great feeling. That. Yeah, it's it's good, but I just want to see how far I can get in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Hard work starts now and all that. Is that, yeah. is that how you looking at it's it? It's always yeah? been hard work. Well, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say. I mean, how, how do you, how often do you practice? Um, I do between like five and eight hours a day, every every day. Every Sometimes day. I'll have a Sunday off. Yeah, yeah. But but most days, yeah. That amount, that amount of time. Yeah. Just different shots or, or playing frames. Um. Well, sometimes I'll practice with players, yeah, like yeah. like and other professionals and good amateurs. Yeah, yeah. And then the days I'm not doing that, I might be with my coach. And right. if I'm not doing that, I'll just have a day on my own. Just doing. Just stuff practicing yourself. whatever I need to practice on. Who's the Who's the highest profile player you've played against? I've I've played like uh, I've. Played John Higgins, I played Karen Wilson, who just lost in the world final. All oh, right. Okay. I beat both of them in exhibition matches. Beat John Higgins? Yeah. I've played, I think I've played Steve Twelve. Davis, Sean Murphy. Played, have you played yeah. Davis? Yeah. Sean Murphy. And as well. Ken Doherty as well. So you're racking them up then, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, I've got to bring something up because obviously it was in the news a couple of weeks ago. I love Ronnie O'Sullivan, I think he's incredible. Um, <laughs> But he, he come out with a, a statement after one of his matches, which has caught a lot of attention. Yeah. And and obviously, he then goes and wins stuff, so it, it, it kind of backs up what yeah. he was saying, I, I guess, I guess. But he come out and said that 
the standard of young player isn't great because people like him shouldn't still be yeah. getting to finals and uh, you know, talking about John Higgins as well, I think, saying, you know, we're old, yeah. we shouldn't be getting there. I mean, how does that make a, you know, a rising star like yourself? What did that make you feel like? It depends what way you look at it. Yeah. I was laughing my head off when he, when he said it. Really, yeah. I watched it live, yeah. And some people take it the wrong way. Right. But, I know, he, he, you just, he, just, he just says it. He doesn't mean to say that. Because he said in um, he said in another interview, they are really good players, but they just they just need to improve their consistency. Yeah, yeah. So it's how you take it. Yeah, because I was just I was waiting for him to say something else. <laughs> yeah, because I know I know what he's like. Yeah. And um, it just you, you just got to ignore what he says because the likes of Johnny Higgins says the standards getting better all the time anyway. Mm. So just to go on the pro tour now, when when like Ronnie O'Sullivan was coming through. Mm. If if he was as good as he was, if he was as good as he is now, he, he he'd have probably been world number one when he was like sixteen or seventeen, because mm. the standard just weren't as good then. Yeah, yeah. He was so it's it depends what way you look at it, and it's hard. The game's getting harder and harder. Mm. I suppose it's a you look at it like a gauntlet thrown down, can't you? Just like yeah. you know, and I, I, that's how I took. It. I thought it was just laughing when I seen it because I thought. You know what Ronnie's yeah. like. He does come out with mad statements <laughs> at times, doesn't he? But yeah. it, you know he is he's a character, and you need yeah. characters in snooker. But it is. I, I will take it. I think as like, all right, yeah. I'll prove, especially if I had your talent, yeah. I'll be thinking, well, I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I know, you know what he means. I know what he means, but he, he says it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, he? yeah, yeah. Interesting. But yeah. yes, you can use that as a little bit of a, a little bit of fire in motivation, your belly to show yeah. motivation yeah. to show him and. Um, have you got a message? Do you want to give him a message? No. Like, no. Just prove it on the yeah. Yeah. prove it on the green bays, can't you? Yeah, I'm so, waiting for the. Um, there's a draw for me second tournament on right. the calendar. Right. And I can draw Ronnie. I can draw Ronnie in any tournament. Yeah, but yeah. I think there's a good chance of me drawing a top player in this one. Right. So that'll be coming out. Would you like, like? Would you like to play? Because obviously. As a as a snooker player, when you're a young lad coming through, you must want to play the best to see yeah. to see where you are. So yeah. would you like to get them in it? A... Yeah, because they're not going to be around for for a yeah, much more yeah. time. So you want to play them while you play can. Them, yeah, beat them and then yeah, beat say them. that's for the interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say the it. old players aren't that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and again, it's it, it is a, it, I guess like it, it's there is the goal because it's a chance yeah. for you to to go on and. Hopefully we'll go on and better what he's yeah. done. You think he's been an incredible and still is an incredible snooker yeah. player, isn't he? But well, he's he's the benchmark. To, he's what you aim. He's he's like the person you you copy what he's the amount of practice he's done and stuff yeah. like that. Because that's the only way you get as good as what is he like? Is he would it be fit? I wouldn't. I wouldn't like embarrass you saying is he your hero? But is he someone you'd look up to and go well? If there was like a snooker icon, who I would, would it be yeah. him or is there somebody else? Him and John Higgins. John, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're just like the, the two. Ronnie's like the best. Like Natal, John Higgins yeah. is probably like number three. Yeah, yeah. I think Stephen Henry was Stephen Henry was the best. Then Ronnie took over him. Mm. So it'd be any put, of them three. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking up to them, you can't really look up to anyone better than them. Out of them three, this might be a hard question for you. Out of them three, whose style are you? Would you say you were closest to? In between John Higgins and Ronnie. Oh yeah, yeah. got that little bit of flair and go after people. Yeah. But yeah, he does. He's got like too much flair for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It's gonna be gonna be interesting to uh, to yeah. see where you go. I mean, you've got a you've got a tournament coming up, haven't you? In, in next week, yeah. Yeah. In uh, Milton Keynes, it's a Championship League. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you're feeling good. Yeah. 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 It's Can't good, wait. Yeah. No. It's been ages since I've had a tournament, so I'm Has more it? looking, looking, looking um, forward to that more than will this Will this be your first tournament since Sane and Pro? I played in the World Championship, but I went into that as an amateur. Oh, OK. So this will be my first professional. First like, professional. Yeah, first tournament yeah. as a professional. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And you're going to, for this next one, there's an Everton link, because I think you're going to wear... You're gonna uh, have... Yeah, I'm going to wear the Everton in the community badge. Brilliant. Yeah, on my so waistcoat. Yeah, so that's going to be... Uh, that your charity that you you're using for this one, yeah, so yeah. a nice little link there to yeah. uh, to our football club as well and the city because even though it is Everton and, and it is a city charity, yeah, really yeah. They, they do incredible stuff for that for our city, don't they? So yeah, it's one, probably if not the, one of the best, if not the best, isn't it? Oh God, they're out of shadow. Yeah, I mean if only our team could be as yeah. good as they are. <laughs> um, just let's touch on the team first. Um, obviously, you're Evertonian, which I said before. So, are you excited by? 
what's going on recently. Obviously, Carlo Ancelotti and yeah, and the, you know, yeah, the, the I think, signings of late. I think when he came, I think a lot of people expected a lot of him just yeah. because of who he is. Yeah. But I think now the signings, I think the signings will just improve the, the team massively anyway. Mm. I think a lot of people will expect like uh, European football in the next couple of years. Yeah, definitely. I do. Because they've, <laughs> they've got the money now, haven't they? They've got to, yeah. yeah. Got to build the team. Yeah. No, it, I'm looking forward to seeing how they get on. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, we're all, I think we are all excited at what's yeah. going on at the moment. Who's your, who was like your first Everton hero then? Who, can you, who would um, be someone you'd... Probably Duncan Ferguson. Big Dunk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's I think he's the best thing. I mean, it's great. It was great seeing him manage for yeah. a few games as well, wasn't it? Before yeah. Carlo come in, but I think Duncan's a lot of people's idol, I suppose. Well, yeah. icon, isn't he? He's an iconic player, yeah. isn't he? Big Dunk. So uh, he was in here a while ago. Sat was in he? Uh, yeah, yeah, come in and seeing us. So it's great to see him still there, and obviously yeah. with Carlo Antilotti, and it's getting uh, exciting times for you and and hopefully Everton as well yeah. moving forward. So yeah, incredible. hopefully it's a good year. Be looking out for you know, won't we? And loads of Evertonians, but not just Evertonians, because we do, on Merseyside we do generally get behind the, the team. Things a bit different, obviously, yeah, but when yeah. it's sports people from this city, yeah. the city generally does get behind them. And I mentioned John Parrott before, you know, the city, even though he's an Evertonian, the city were yeah. behind him. He became world champion, yeah. and we've seen it with Tony Bellew, even though he's a you know he's a die-hard blue. I mean, <laughs> a lot of yeah. a lot of the city get behind him, and we do try, we do kind of take our sports people there uh, to our hearts yeah. so I think there's a there's an opportunity for, uh, for someone to get involved and back your local businesses there's still a place to to support you and uh, yeah. as you go forward isn't it so if anyone is interested who's watching who's got a local business the link will be in the description chance to sponsor Sean get involved with Sean's journey one of the uh, the rising stars of snooker yeah. and um, you know hopefully all the city like I say I think they will I think they will get behind you and We'll see you there on the green bays, giving yeah. it to you, you know, with your waistcoat <laughs> yeah. on. And we were we were joking actually before you come in, saying things. Sean will come in with the waistcoat on and I was yeah. joking at the top of it there. But come in nice and relaxed today. But yeah. uh, if you wanted the opportunity to get involved and sponsor Sean, one of our, one of the city's bright sportsmen, like I say, the link is in the description and we'll have some social stuff as well. Look out for him there. But uh, I just want to thank you for coming in and having no, a chat and wish you. All the very best, mate, on your journey, and hopefully you'll get a chance to uh, to put Ronnie in his place. Yeah, that'll be that'll be oh, well, quite yeah. interesting to watch. So, how can we find you on socials? It's Sean One Four Seven Maddox on okay. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Make sure you follow. Give Sean a follow. Get behind him. Like I say, one of the rising stars of the city. You can catch him at Sean One Four Seven Maddox. Just again, just in case you missed it. There. Thanks for coming in and well, having thanks. a chat. All the very best, mate. I hope, uh, hope to see you lifting trophies and yeah. come back in when you've won some. I will definitely. Well, come back in anyway whenever yeah. you want. But come back, in, especially if you win some, be even better. Um, give the video a like. Remember, if you want to sponsor Sean before we go. The link is in the description. Get involved if you're a local business. Give this video a like. Um, yeah, and make sure you follow Sean's, Sean's journey to stardom. Thanks for watching. See you later.